Hi everyone, Davey of Fit and Healthy Forever. Um, I've been looking for some new sort of content and I was looking around some of the uh, YouTube channels and doctors that I follow. I've come across um, a YouTube channel called CBC News um, and it's a, it's a Canadian one and it deals with, um, it's called the marketplace, it deals with um, food tampering and things like that and, and our foods, what they say they are. So I found a few on sort of Subway and McDonald's, which I'll cover maybe in another video shortly. But this one I wanted to look at today was um, best before dates on food labels. Now, best before dates are basically saying that once the date has passed, the quality can't be guaranteed, but it's usually safe to eat. That's the general consensus of what a best before date is. So... The general consensus of foods to steer clear from when when you're looking at best before dates are things like deli meats, soft cheese, raw meats. These have the potential to grow pathogens which can't be seen or smelled but they're dangerous. Things like bread, pastas, cookies, they're usually okay. Uh, they may be a little bit brittle, they may be a musty smelling but they wouldn't harm you. So how can you trust best before dates? The, the lady who was doing the um, research and the interviewing, she, she got one insider who, who'd worked in a bakery, a girl who'd worked in a bakery. And uh, she wasn't hiding her face or anything like that because she, she doesn't work there anymore. She was quite happy to, to come on camera. She said when she worked in a bakery in Canada, she was instructed by a supervisor to cut things like gattos and cakes in half once the best before date had passed. And each half would be repackaged in a new um, cellophane or packaging and the best before date uh, a new one was applied this would often be for two more weeks on top of the, the date that was already on there that had passed and it would be open to be repeated again if not sold so you could get up to a month past the original best before date and it's still on sale now the same girl said that things like Fruit tart, the little flans that you see that open at the top with fruit on them. They would have the fruit scraped off when the best before date had, had come around and gone. And they'd replace it with fresh fruit and glaze and then resell it with the fresh um, best before date on it. Now, they were instructed to do this on all open cakes and flans by the, the supervisor or the manager. Now CBC News tested some of these cakes and brought and brought them from a local store and took them to a lab. And the lab doctor said ingesting these foods regularly over time could lead to cancer. The lab found a sea of microbes and bacteria under the fruit uh, of some of the cakes indicating possible tampering. I just find this outrageously scandalous. And if these people are finding this, why is nothing being done about it? But I'll come to that a bit later on. So we had an insider tip from someone who worked there. If a cake, a pie or a tart is not in its original form, i.e. it's been cut in half or into smaller pieces, there's usually a reason for it. So if you've seen a gatto that's been cut up, in, there's a reason there. They've repackaged it, looked at it, it seems okay, repackage it, put a fresh uh, best before date on it and sell it. Now, if they were giving it away, it'd be a different thing, but to sell it when it's past its best before and, and they've actually found a sea of microbes and bacteria in some of the cakes, then this is outrageous. Now, one cake shop in Canada refused to be filmed, but they said after the findings that they had introduced new working practices. So I suppose that's a step in the right direction. Um, what the CBC News did, they set up an online poll on best before dates with astounding results. One former employee said he witnessed expired seafood being turned into chowder mix. Chowder mix is like a stew um, type of stew broth that with all bits of, of clams and stuff like that. And then they put in these, um, these uh, best before dates things that have passed and mixing that in with it and it's just scandalous also pies cakes and cookies 
cut up and separated and repackaged in single servings. So if you've got a pack of cookies, the big cookies, and they were got sold the best before date had gone past, they were taking them out, repackaging them in a cellophane um, packaging and putting a best before date on them and selling them as separates. Just making sure that they looked okay. That's probably not the worst case scenario because with things like cookies and that, as long as they don't look mouldy, then they're not too bad. So going over now to meat, meat rewrapped and best before dates changed. One guy who now works for the CBC used to work for a meat packaging company. And what he was instructed to do was he was given a pallet of meat that the best before dates had passed. And he was to take the meat, if it was a bit brown in colour, they dip it in animal blood. They get animal blood, dip it in so it looked red and nice and rich coloured. And, and once it was bright and red and, and looking healthy, then they'd repackage it and put a new best before date on it. And he said this was common practice, this was a daily occurrence. Now, that's bad enough, but what they did with ground meat, which is like your minced beef and like minced lamb and things like that, when that went a bit brown, it would be dipped in blood the same and put back into the mincer with fresh meat and all mixed together so that it all looked healthy meat. And the mince practice was um, recreated in, in lab conditions by this lab doctor. Uh, the results, he said, the meat was loaded with bacteria, which, was, which were toxic chemicals. And it can cause a host of health issues. Now, this is deception at its worst. And just because it's in Canada, don't think that these practices couldn't happen over here. It's so simple to dupe the general public. What's to stop in this country doing the same thing? I can't find any information of it happening in Britain at the moment, but I, w I couldn't state for a second that it doesn't because it's so simple to do. And the insider tip is with meats, reach to the back of the rack, not the front. The ones at the front are usually the ones been tampered with. He's saying the one at the back is probably the one you should go for. The next thing you looked at was uh, marinated meat. Now, I used to buy a lot of this from Wayne Walkers. Um, your sort of um, marinated uh, chicken quarters and pork steaks and ribs and things like that. Now, the insider tip is the meat is usually marinated if it's off or going off to hide the odour and the colour. And it's usually more expensive when they've done that to it as well. So you could be buying meat that's going off and paying more for it because they've put, a, put it into a marinade. Now, the insider said, from what he was told, it was all about profit. The health of the consumer was never even considered. Now... He's saying, do not buy marinated or spiced meat. There's usually a reason it's being treated that way. So I haven't bought any from Weight Walkers for a long time, but um, I'd be very reluctant to buy it. It, it could be legit at Weight Walkers or anywhere else you're looking for it, but it, it, it just sows that seed of doubt in your mind if this is what people are doing. So moving on to fruit. Once fruit starts to go off, the retailer cuts off the bad bits and, and uses the good looking bits to make a fruit salad bowl or a tray. So you've seen those plastic little trays with bits of strawberry and grapes and bits of banana and stuff like that in. That's possibly stuff that's gone off. They've cut the bad bits off, repackaged it, put a bit of cellophane over it and put a, a best before date, a renewed best before date on it, which again is absolutely scandalous. And this has been seen to be done with vegetables as well, when you buy them little veggie bowls. It's usually veg that's going off past the, the best before date and they just uh, repackage it and put a new date on it. It's just mind boggling. Okay, so what they say is hard products like fruit and veg, it's possibly okay to cut off the mold and eat the rest, but not to sell it, surely. Not with soft products, definitely not. Cheese, strawberries, soft fruits, things like that, definitely not. Now, these store practices are generally self-policed. So as much as you have food inspectors, they can't be there all the time. They can't see what's going on all the time. Um, obviously, employees are not going to spill the beans unless they've left the company. So 
the people that have spilled the beans on these are people that have left the companies and gone to work elsewhere or gone into a different industry. What they're saying though, the people who've left and store practices are usually self-policed. A third of people contacted who used to work in the industry said that food tampering goes on. Now one food inspector who was quite open about it, he says he's been hearing of things like this for 30 years, which is very, very difficult to catch people in the act or catch people that have actually done it and have proof to, to prosecute them or fine the companies. It's just so difficult to police. So a re the Retail Council of Canada, the head guy there said he wouldn't, he wouldn't be interviewed at first. He kept ignoring the, the CBC News girl who was trying to, to interview him. So she went unannounced, knocked on the door, went to the reception and said, can I see Mr. David somebody, Wilkes or something like that? Can I see him speak to him? He came out and she just barraged him there and then. And uh, he would not accept the CBC claims, even though employees or past employees were testifying that they were instructed to do these things. He didn't believe it. He said it doesn't happen. He, he's not convinced. He was challenging her findings. Now, I don't know how you can challenge something that's been taken to a lab and processed by an independent lab and they found these things. I don't know how you challenge that. But he, he, he didn't say what he was going to do about it, if anything. He just kept saying, I challenge that. I, I don't believe that's happening. So she asked him if he was thinking of amending current policies and regulations to, to bring them in line. And his comment was, he said that current policies and regulations didn't need to be policed better or re-regulated as he believed the laws were being adhered to. So on top of all these findings and people coming forward and saying this is what we were instructed to do by managers, supervisors, he claims that laws are being adhered to. So they're, they're never going to admit it, even when it's blatantly done on film and they can see what's going on and people are actually saying it in front of camera. They even name the companies they worked at, which I, I wouldn't do because it's in Canada. Um, but. As I say, don't believe for one second that this isn't happening in, in the UK. Why could they not do this in the UK? But that, because it's it's so easy to do. Um, it's not policed not on a, a regular basis. So I'm just very wary of... Um, I've got this mantra now, which you'll probably hear me say quite a lot on these videos. If man made it, don't eat it. So your things like your cookies, your bread, your cakes, your pastas, your lasagnas, stuff like that, make them yourself. At least you know what's in them. If, you, if you're going to trust to other people um, making these things, you don't know what's in them, what they've done to them, how they've repackaged them or put another shelf life date on them. You just don't have any idea. As I said earlier, I've seen one on a Subway and McDonald's. I'll bring you that and you might be astounded at what they've come up with as well. Um, People have been sacked and people have been gone, gone to jail over some of the things that have gone on with these. Again, it's in America, but you have McDonald's and Subway over here. Who's to say it's not being done over here? Just be very, very careful. It's so easy. I, I know everybody likes a pizza. I didn't like pizza at all. Don't like bought pizzas one bit. I found a recipe for a ketogenic pizza and the taste is out of this world. I have one every week now because I know what's in it. I'm making it from scratch. I'm not using a bread base, I'm using the base made of um, soft cheese and almond flour or ground almonds. It's absolutely gorgeous. I put all my own toppings on, cheese, onion, tomato, salami, sausage, whatever I want on it. And I know what's in it. So I'm quite confident eating it. And it, honestly, it tastes better than any piece of pizza I've ever tasted from Domino's. I've had them at parties in the past and I've, I've just took one bite and said, God, that's yuck. Won't touch it. But these, it's so easy going on YouTube and finding recipes now for stuff you can make yourself. I've even made my own ice cream last week. And it was so, it took me less than five minutes. And it's so gorgeous. Because you, again, ice cream, we love ice. We all love ice cream, but it's full of sugar. And I'm just reading a book now on the obesity epidemic in this country and, and carbohydrate stroke sugar is the culprit. Um, once we get to realise that, you'll realise then that you need to do something about it. Anyway, um, just straying a little bit there. 
Thanks ever so much for everyone for taking the time to listen. Just be very careful out there. As I say, it's only a few months ago that I was buying spiced and marinated uh, meat from Wayne Walkers. I wouldn't be buying it again, I can assure you. Because I'm not sure. They can they can try and tell me what they want, but until I'm 100% sure what's going on it or in it, or I'll do it myself. I can marinate it myself if I want to, or spice it myself. Don't trust the people doing it for you. It, as I've said before with your health, if you abdicate your health to someone else, a nurse, a doctor, a, a surgeon or whatever, don't think for one second they've got your best interests at heart. Not always. Some have, some haven't. It's all down to the mighty book. All down to the mighty book. Um, so, again, always ends in a little bit of a rant, but I'm, I'm passionate about what I'm finding here and passing it on. I don't want people to be duped and, and conned and, and your health suffering for it because you're buying shit that people are putting out there. Make it yourself. It's not difficult. So... Thanks again for listening. Until the next video, stay fit and healthy forever. Like, subscribe, and just tell your friends if you like the stuff I'm putting out there. There'll be a lot more coming from CBC News. They, they seem to be very uh, on the ball and on the side of the consumer. So uh, most of what that I'll put on will be uh, about food because it's part of what I'm passionate about. So thanks again for listening. Until the next video, speak to you soon.